Hi guys and welcome to the channel. Hillbilly Military Modeling here and in this video we're going to complete our M6 gun motor carriage uh, by a Tallery, a 135th scale. I'm going to be doing some scale details uh, mainly concentrating on the winch and we're going to add a little bit of stowage uh, and then we'll do the weathering and a final reveal so I hope you guys enjoy the video. So first off what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of um, thread that we're going to use for our cable and I'm going to use this Prismacolor uh, paint marker in black and we're going to go ahead and paint this uh, thread. Now the thread diameter is, um, well I'm not sure what it is, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's thicker than normal thread. It's uh, blue jean thread, so it's heavier, uh, but we're going to use this to represent our uh, cable on our winch and after we get this painted up with the marker I'm gonna hang it up and let it dry and we're gonna work on the rest of it so <laughs> on to the next so here's what we're going to use uh, to detail out our winch we have some chain from the hobby store some denim thread which we've already painted some 0 0.035 inch polystyrene sheet and a piece of sprue now we need a cable end for our winch cable and so I made this test piece here that I've got the stretch sprue going through so I don't lose it and it's a little bit out of scale so we're going to go ahead and make another one. I'm going to show you guys how I do that. First thing I do is drill a cross hole through the sprue. Now this will be where the pin goes that will hold our chain in place. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to square up and mark uh, where we're going to cut our slot because we're going to have a slot to go down through this uh, cable end. So I'll mark it with an exacto uh, knife. And that's going to be our guide for us to start our slot. And then I just take my uh, Tamiya saw and we start our slot. Now we don't cut it to depth, we just want to make sure that we've got it uh, marked good enough for us to continue the cut later and that's what that looks like on to the next step so now what I'm going to use is a cordless drill and we're going to use it like a lathe and we're going to turn this piece down to the diameter that we need I'm going to use a file and we're just going to operate the drill and use the file to turn down the diameter uh, which it needs to be smaller than this test piece that I made because the test piece is out of scale and so hopefully this one I'll do much better with. So as you're turning down plastic uh, you're going to want to make sure that you keep your file moving because the plastic will get warm and it will clog up your file and it goes pretty quick. You're just going to want to make sure that you don't use too much pressure because uh, you will snap off the, uh, the plastic sprue if you do. So here I'm just checking to make sure that uh, I've got the right diameter uh, so that we'll be in scale with the model. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete our slot. Now we didn't do this before because we didn't want the uh, sprue to spring closed on the slot which would make it difficult may even cause the sprue to uh, break off uh, when we were turning it. So now we're going to make it to the correct depth. And there we go that's what we want it to look like. So now we're going to go back to the drill and now that we've got it all chucked up into the drill I'm going to take this triangular file that I have here and we're going to taper this cable end uh, back towards the end where the cable is going to be inserted into it. Now you have to be really careful because as the sprue gets thinner uh, you have to use lighter and lighter pressure or you'll snap the part off the sprue and we're not quite ready to take it off yet. 
So I'll just go ahead and take this out of the chuck on the drill and that's what we have. So we got our hole drilled in at the slot cut to accept the chain and we've tapered it back towards the end where it's going to go onto our cable. And you can see how much smaller the new one is from the old one. So the new one is in scale. And we're ready to go ahead and take this off the sprue. Once it's separated from the sprue, I'll go ahead and drill a hole in the end of it to accept our winch cable. And we are done with this part. <laughs> I also go ahead and tie a string through it, a piece of thread, so that if I drop it in the floor, I can find it again. So using the polystyrene sheet, I, uh, I fabricate a hook, <laughs> just simply cut it out with an X-Acto blade. Now the top hook uh, was my first attempt and it didn't look very much like a hook <laughs> you know, for, for a winch. So I went ahead and made a second one and I'm gonna go with the second one. So we need a chain to connect our hook to our cable. And I'm afraid the chain that I have here is just too out of scale. So I've decided I'm going to make a chain. <laughs> so, never done this before, but I'm going to use this uh, phone wire here for house phones. It's a 24 gauge uh, copper wire. So the first thing I need to do is uh, strip the insulation off of it. So what I'm showing you here is the easiest way that I have found to strip this insulation off of our copper wire. And of course my block is sliding around on me while I'm trying to film this, but there we go. Now all we got to do is separate that insulation from the copper and we're ready to go. So what I'm showing you here is that uh, the chain is about a third too large, out of scale. And so I've selected a drill bit that I'm going to use as my mandrel to bend our copper wire around. And it is a number 57 uh, wire gauge drill bit. And we're just going to tightly wrap and coil this uh, copper wire right around our drill bit. That'll ensure that our links are uh, all equal. Now that we've got our wire all coiled up, we'll just slide it off of our drill bit. And now we're going to have to cut our links. So we're just going to cut down one side of this. And what I'm going to use um, is an old pair of uh, sprue cutters. Don't use your good sprue cutters for this because copper wire will destroy them. So uh, an old an old set will work good uh, if you have some really uh, small wire cutters. Uh, but you've got to be able to get up inside the coil here. And I found that I needed to flip these over. Uh, they're more pointed on one side than the other. And then we're just going to go down and snip us off some links. Now you're going to want to make a lot more links than you're going to need. Well, I wouldn't say a lot, but more links than you're going to need. Um, because some of them may be slightly deformed or like me, uh, a few of them will fly off somewhere, <laughs> never to be seen again. Now that we have our links, uh, we're gonna start with uh, one link and just close it up. And then we're just gonna start linking all these together. Now, of course, these are really, sp really small pieces. So, uh, you're going to have to take your time. They're a bit fiddly, but uh, it will go together. So here I'm closing up the first link. And you can see how small they are.
I do finally figure out how to do this correctly. <laughs> but you get the idea. We're moving on. And as you can see here, our new chain is considerably smaller than the, uh, the hobby store stuff. And I think it's much more in scale. And it's going to look it's going to look pretty good, I think. So we're going to keep going on. So I do have to make uh, two links, uh, one for each end, to connect our hook and also our clevis. So I use a number uh, 51 drill bit to do that. And we are much more in scale with our chain, so uh, we're going to stick with it and we're going to move on. Now I've uh, painted the chain uh, Vallejo black and dry brushed over it with some testers flat steel and we've assembled it here and I think it looks pretty good um, pretty much into scale much better than the other chain so a tallery didn't uh, provide us with any kind of stowage so I went to my spare parts box and found us some pieces to go on our kit so the back sides of these pouches uh, were hollow I decided to go ahead and fill those And so I sprayed them with uh, some OD green, and after that's dry, I'm going to use this uh, Tamiya panel liner to darken it. And I'll let that dry. Now our panel liner is going to darken the uh, OD green, and now I'm going to use this uh, enamel thinner, uh, lightly dampened brush and just brush over it, removing the panel liner from all the high spots. And I'll do this with the other two satchels as well. And once it's dry, it's going to dry lighter than it is right now. Now it's time to remove the mask from our windshield. And hopefully we didn't have any bleed through. Um, Remember, we put the uh, liquid mask around the bottom of our windshield wipers. And so we're going to remove that. And peel off the backs of the uh, masking on the windshield. Um, we're going to save those pieces that we take off the back for later. Here you can see I've masked the uh, swipe area of the windshield wipers for the front of the windshield and then with the masking tape from the rear of the windshield I've cut out these areas where the soldiers would have wiped the dust from the windshield and that should give us a pretty good look I'm hoping it's the first time I've tried that now I'm going to weather this uh, steel pot this helmet uh, and I'm going to do that by dry brushing some flat steel enamel right on the very top of the helmet and also on the rim around the bottom of the helmet. And next we're going to use some hairspray. And we're going to do hairspray chipping on this helmet. <laughs> so I spray it with uh, two light coats of the hairspray and let that dry completely. And then I come in with the OD green and I spray over top the hairspray. And once that's dry, uh, we come in with some water and put the water on the uh, OD green on top of the helmet and let the water soak in a little bit. And this is going to release uh, or reactivate rather our hairspray and allow us to do the hairspray chipping with a soft brush. So the trick here is to not get too aggressive with it, kind of take your time with it, and if it looks like you're removing too much, you can just back away from that area and come back to it. And we're starting to get where we want to be. This takes a little bit of time and patience.
and here we are this is uh, this is the chipping and I think it came out pretty good if I can stay in focus <laughs> so, uh, All right, let's move on. So here we are with um, a barracks bag that I've painted up, uh, and we're gonna put that on the vehicle as well, along with our Tommy gun painted up and our helmet. So I've glued the uh, satchels to the sideboards of the vehicle, and I've taken some Tamiya mask tape and uh, cut us some straps. Now I do have to secure the ends of the straps with just a little bit of CA glue so that they don't come loose. And then I come back in and paint the straps and also the tie downs on the, uh, on the satchels. So now we're in the home stretch guys. So I'm going to take this Vallejo Pigments Dark Yellow Okra and Desert Dust and we're going to start weathering their tires. So the very first thing I do is I take the dark yellow okra and uh, some water as a carrier. And we're gonna paint this into the treads of the tires. We really need to fill up the, the treads. And after we've got the treads completely filled up, we're going to allow that to dry completely. And after it's completely dry, we're going to use a, I'm, I'm using a toothbrush here. You could use any fairly stiff brush. And we're just going to go across the tread, just like I'm showing you here. And we're going to start removing um, excess pigment. Here I'm just blending away any hard line uh, between the pigment and the paint on the tire. And we're getting ready for our second pigment. Now with our second lighter pigment, uh, Desert Dust, and I'm using water as a carrier again. Um, I'm coming in and applying that to the rim and I'll also do this on the side of the tire. We're also going to want to go in on the back side of the tires and apply our dust there as well. Now once that has dried, and it doesn't take long, these pigments dry really quick. The water uh, evaporates quite fast. Uh, we come in and we start blending this in very carefully. And the beauty of using these pigments is that if you take too much off, you can reapply it. And if you got too much on, you can take it off. So I think there's just a little bit too much dust right on the contact surface where the tire comes in contact with the ground. So I'm taking a cotton bud here and it's just moistened with water. And we're just gonna lightly remove uh, the pigments right around the tread.
So for our windshield, I sprayed it with the uh, flat clear acrylic by Model Masters. And that's given us a textured surface that our pigment can stick to. And so now I'm lightly dusting the windshield with that uh, uh, desert, light desert dust. And now we can remove our masks. And there we go. So that's what we've accomplished with our work on the windshield. I like the look. So, on to the next part. Now it's time to start dusting up the uh, undercarriage of our vehicle. So I'm using the Vallejo uh, Dark Yellow Okra. And we're stuffing it into the corners. <laughs> All your little nooks and crannies and dusting over the flat areas. I pay more attention to getting it into the corners than um, worrying about the flat areas. Because what we'll do later is we'll come back in and kind of blend the dust over top of the flat surfaces on the bottom of the vehicle. Once the bottom of the vehicle has been uh, coated in the pigments, we're going to use the Desert Dust pigment and concentrate in the corners of the bed. And we're also going to use it um, in the floorboards of the vehicle. And we just need to get the pigment stuck into the corners real good. And then we'll come back and blend that. So for all the flat surfaces on the upper portion of the vehicle, I'm going to be using this Tamiya uh, Weathering Master Set A, specifically the, the light desert dust and uh, we're going to dust the tops of the fenders and the hood and, and the sides of the bed and everything. Um, unfortunately I've lost the footage to that so <laughs> that's the final step and I assemble the vehicle. And here we are guys uh, another completed project. I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, just let you guys take a look at it here for a, a minute. And so I did use a little bit of streaking grime and oil stains on the uh, differentials on this. I uh, forgot to mention those earlier, but that was the very last thing that I did. So what I was going for was a vehicle in Tunisia in the desert, and I think, I think we probably accomplished that. And with that, guys, that completes this project. Um, there were a few little issues with it, um, but really, if you stop and consider the price point at which 
uh, this model sells for it's not that bad of a model it's it's actually a pretty decent model I really enjoyed building it and speaking of price point I gave eighteen dollars and forty five cents USD for it now you don't get a lot of extra stuff you know actually you don't get any extra stuff but uh, a little bit of imagination you can make this model into uh, a pretty nice little display piece so I'd like to thank all of my subscribers I really appreciate you guys and if you really like this video uh, please give me a like and if it's your first time to the channel and you like what you see feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified uh, on my next build speaking of which I have to go find something to build. <laughs> so uh, I really appreciate you, you guys taking the time, and thanks for watching.